what you guys got another video here for you this is a computer update video and a bit of a rant really I suppose and also to clear up some of your Q&A's that you may have had now there was a lot of negative feedback a lot of critiquing and a lot of shit talking when I uploaded the video of this build and uh, uh, most of the questions people were asking I was trying to answer but I couldn't quite uh, put it into words. So I thought I'd make a quick video just to show you. So one of the first questions was why didn't you put the radiator up the top here? Uh, as you can see uh, there is a, a bracket system here that holds the radiator. And the radiator as you can see I've managed to get two fans in there but they don't uh, it won't allow the radiator to be fitted in this recess. And that's because uh, this is limitations of uh, I think it's 297 and the Kraken 280 meter radiator which you'll see at the front which I'll show you in a minute uh, doesn't fit in there you may be thinking 280 does go into 297 but there's a little bit extra on the radiator which doesn't allow you to fit it inside this location there's also no mounting holes here and this area between the two is really too wide so there's nothing to mount the radiator onto there's these mounting holes here for these thumb screws but um, the, the, you can't get the uh, radiator to mount to those because it's too narrow so that is the answer and why the reason I put the radiator at the front so let me just show you the front here so you can see what I'm on about with the radiator so as you can see here this is where the radiator was mounted and uh, the mounting holes for the screws here are here okay and that's where the actual fans go and I actually use these holes to try and mount it onto one of the fan screw holes now a lot of questions were from people saying why didn't you uh, put the fans on the outside or the radiator on the inside I showed that in the video but there was no voiceover on the video so there was just music so a lot of people come to the conclusion themselves that I made a mistake or something was wrong or something like that and I should have done it this way I should have done it that way and I tried those ways and they didn't work so let me explain them okay another question that people had about the radiator I just want to show you here the length of the radiator you can see when I put it up the top here it does come down past uh, the 290 I think it was, no 297 so it won't fit up the top it has these extra bits here and I'm sort of rough guessing that but you can see there's got these extra little bits at the bottom of the radiator which you have to account for inside that bracket so it won't fit up there okay another thing that people wanted to talk about is where I mounted it to be honest I was running out of options at this stage as I said if I'd have done a full talk over video uh, you would have heard me talking about problems I had trying to mount it and uh, the limitations because I didn't have a back plate and I didn't have uh, the mounting brackets for the uh, actual cooler itself and also I lost all that stuff so there was reasons why I was having troubles but also here you see me try to put the radiator in here which it fits real snug in this area in the front and you see that in the video the problem was if I try to put the fan on the outside of it uh, the actual outer casing would not allow me it has two inner outer casings uh, the actual case it has this one and it has the other case that goes on the outside of that as you can see here so it won't fit okay with a fan there so if the radiator was in here and the fans on the outside it won't fit another question that people had is couldn't you put the radiator inside here and have the fan on the other side well I did try that and I couldn't marry up the screws the screw holes and also I couldn't get the screws long enough to go through to fit uh, the actual um, radiator so I'd need to get new screws longer screws uh, to fit through so that was a problem and it may be still possible to do that if I had the screws but at the time I had no screws to fit that so that was the problem the next problem I had here was mounting these that's about as good as I could get it 
to get it here, inside here. And also, the, the question, the next question was... Now, another concern for people was negative pressure. So let me just explain to you. Negative pressure is when you've got no intake air. Now, there's no fan here, as you can see, and there is air going into that case, and that's not negative pressure. So ne positive pressure is when you've got too much uh, airflow going in, and that can cause stagnant air inside the case and slight rise in temperatures, but they're all marginal. I could also put two fans as intakes up the top, which I'll probably do later on. I'll probably use the front ones and put them in as intakes. Now also another thing they mentioned was the radiator's gonna overboil, the water's gonna overboil, and as you'll see from the temperatures later on, that's not true. And also, as you see here, the radiator was having the air blown through it and out the front of the case, which is gonna cut down on dust intake into the case and also stop dust build up inside the radiator and it will keep the airflow running just fine, just like a car, okay? And you'll see all this in the temperatures later. And again, people come to their own conclusions. And they come to their own conclusions when I was building the case because they see the video, which was not the finished article. So again, they put two and two together and come up with six. And uh, I said at the end of the video, which is another reason why people don't watch all the video. If you listen at the end, I said there's some cable tidying and some fettling to do inside there. This was running on the BIOS when I did this build. Uh, you see the lights, it was, this was blue. It's now red because I've installed Windows and I've tested it. And of course I've tested it. Um, so people do sometimes hate on people rather than watch uh, the actual content itself. So we had another question here about why did I buy a 1060? Well, 1060s, this is not a standard 1060. So that's another thing that people try to do, they go on YouTube, they watch too many of these YouTube videos with people specking out machines and they're going, oh look, you can get this build for such and such. Well, you can probably get that, but the trouble is, what do they skimp on? Let's go over it. They skimp on the power supply. They go and buy a $10 power supply for all their expensive graphics card. And of course, when that power supply blows, it's going to blow all your components because it's got no protection and it's cheap as shit and it ain't worth anything. Uh, another thing people do, they buy a cheap ass motherboard and they've got no intention of overclocking or whatever it is. They just want the best gra graphics card and you can do that with motherboards. You know, you can buy a cheaper motherboard uh, if you've got no reason to overclock and you just want the uh, lower chipsets. That's fine and you don't want all the LEDs, that's fine. But I do. So that's the reason why I'm buying that. RAM was another issue. Why did you spend so much money on RAM? And why did you spend so much money on this? Well, it's about the look of the machine itself. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, people go even further and replace the cables. And uh, that's their choice. So let me just clear up one more thing here with the uh, build itself. If you had a thousand pounds to build a machine and you was a PC tech, Basically, what you'd have to do is build that machine and make a profit uh, on that as well for your business. So you're limited to what you can actually buy for the actual machine itself, okay? So you can't just go buying stuff uh, willy-nilly, uh, put a big 10, 1080 graphics card in there, and then you leave yourself out any budget for the power supply, the case, and stuff like that. Some people want a fancy case, some people want a $10 case, some people it doesn't bother them. So it's each to their own really. You don't need to hate on someone's video uh, because you went and built one for $997 or £997. Or £997. But what parts did you use? There's a reason uh, for parts and prices. So as you can see, we've got a gold certified power supply here. We've got good RAM. We've got a good graphics card. And yeah, I could have gone and got a 1070, but I've had to trim out. Why did I buy too much storage? That was another thing. This was lying around in my cupboard, and uh, I wanted to use it for Linux. And of course, I wanted this um, because of the uh, 
windows that I wanted to put on there, so I wanted a dual boot. Then people were telling me, oh, you shouldn't have bought so much SSDs, and you should have just gone and got a mechanical drive, and you put windows on that. Well, that's like cutting your nose off to spite your face. Because if you do that, then you're going to end up with a slower machine, because now you're running Windows on a mechanical drive instead of either an SSD or one of these. So, I mean, it depends on what you want to do with your build. You go out and do what you want to do, but if you want speed and fast, then you, this is the way to go, or SSD's way to go. So, it's entirely up to you. So remember guys, uh, depending on your budget and how much you've got will depend on uh, what parts you can buy. And there's many ways to spec out a machine, okay, for different parts. Another question quickly was about AMD. Why didn't I build an AMD? Well, that at the time I bought these parts about three months ago, an AMD wasn't out. So anyway, there's your answers to all your questions. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Sorry for the rant. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.